In this video, we are going to be talking about resentment, enlightenment, human darkness, mm. and what we can do to transcend that human darkness so that we can be more resilient, more free, more effective in some sense in our daily life. When we were deciding this topic, you said all resentment is, is toxic and you just you just can't have resentment. Correct. I find that's puzzling because if you just look at like some of the, you know, the political conflicts in the world, how can people not be full of resentment, right? What if, you know, if I was Ukrainian or if I was Russian or Israeli or Palestinian or list a conflict in the world, indigenous, whatever. Um, or just simply mad at my mom. Or yeah, yes, yes, yeah, <laughs> but, totally. But yeah. Why can't why can't why can't I why can't I live a, a life full of resentment and have it be justified? Yes, let's, okay. Let's okay. That's, that's what I'm good. curious about. Yes, there's a saying: drinking the poison and hoping the other person dies. Right. So you hear that. So some people say anger, hope being angry at people or blaming other people for our situation is like drinking the poison and hoping they die. Mm -hmm. I think. As far as I understand, that actually comes from resentment. So resenting somebody or something is drinking the poison and hoping the other person or thing suffers. Right. And as I, it was explained to me, I don't know how true this is. I think it's true. Uh, resentment the, is the resentment. So mm. resentment is to resentment your emotions towards something. And if and resentment is one of the most I'd say shame, resentment are two of the most destructive emotions that we have. Like worse than anger. It's, I guess resentment is anger towards someone. Mm, I think anger is effective and useful in many situations. Mm -hmm. Resentment and shame. Actually, shame can be helpful too. There's pro-social shame, mm -hmm. which uh, I love. Anna Lemke talks about that in her book. And also Heidi, my meditation teacher, talks about pro-social shame. Resentment, I don't think, is ever actually pro-anything, really. So... So it's only, you're saying it's only bad. Let, let's just... Okay, yeah. so what is, what is resentment? Okay. Uh, so let's use some of the examples that you gave. One... When I was rec in recovery, I had a list. Well, the first time I did my resentment inventory, I probably had 30 or 40 things. And my sponsor sort of looked at me and was like, this is a joke. Go back and come back to me when you have a better list. Yeah. Hold on. What, what do you mean? Yeah. What, what, okay. So okay, right. you so, started AA. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe we should also put a bit of context to this. So yeah. looking at resentments and things like that is... And this is probably popular in YouTube and also a la Jordan Peterson, so to speak. He talks a lot about Carl Jung and shadow work and all that kind of stuff. So doing a resentment inventory in the Jungian sense is sort of like a doing shadow work. I would say it's the most effective thing that I've come across. And of course, I'm limited in what I've come across that helps people look at their own darkness and take responsibility for their shit so that they can be free in the world, mm. at least free from their own psyche and free from the torment of resenting other people, places and things. So there's just a bit of context about what resentments are. Okay. Um, so let's just look at this. Why don't we just do that? Okay. Okay. Then my yeah, resentment is anger towards someone wanting to hurt someone. I'm sorry, not anger, w wishing someone bad for a perceived real like, yeah, that's a great so ill that you, they've imposed on you. Like I'm, um, you know, you're you're mad at your friend, you're mad at your partner, you're mad at your yeah, parents. Yeah, I you think you resent them for treating you a certain way, correct? Or for doing correct, something to right. you, that's, or you resent them for a perceived yeah, okay. slight or a, perceived, right? Yeah, okay. So I might and you wish them ill. So resentment has to be wishing someone ill for something real or perceived they've done to you. I think that comes on top of it. So it might be first it's. I resent my mom for not saying I love you enough. Okay. So yeah. I can have that resentment and simultaneously not wish her ill of course, yeah. or wish her ill. Okay. So that's another layer to it. I think it depends on how much of the poison you're drinking and how sick you are spiritually and psychologically. So is resentment the same as being upset with someone? No. It's, it's a next level up? Yes, yes. It's 
it's it's again it's sort of like it's the re-sentiment idea right so you're constantly like playing out these scenarios in your head and mm. blaming the world in some sense it's analogous to blame but not exactly you're blaming other people and holding them responsible for your feelings and your emotions so to be upset would be like maybe like a one-off like oh you might you didn't get back to my email i'm upset with you for ignoring me yes but mike i resent you for for never responding to my emails or no uh, or sorry that one email you missed and i, and I resent you for a long period of time yes, and i'm exactly. constantly playing yes, out that yes, frustration yes. i have with your exactly poor yeah. email etiquette <laughs> yes this yes. is all fake this is not really yeah, good with yeah. emails. but but yes so it's it's a uh, right the resentiment means you're feeling over and over yes. again it's a cycle yes. of emotions of and negative thoughts. emotions and thoughts and thoughts towards someone yes for the ills they've done to you real or perceived yes okay very good okay okay so got a lot of those I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't we all right <laughs> okay so so this so this sheet here i've adapted it a little bit comes from aa okay mm -hmm. and this comes from the step four work step four is made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves so this is a deeply spiritual practice Okay, the Alcoholics Anonymous has simplified it for us mortals, but it really cuts to the heart of this self-centered, egoic way of carrying oneself in the world. Mm. And really breaking free from that is a spiritual experience, in my opinion, mm. is enlightening and is just an incredible tool to manage your daily mental health and well-being. Makes sense. It does. So walking so, around yeah. with resentment is just a it's, poison. it's poison. It's poison. It's poison. And that in AA, they would say that's the number one reason why people drink in some sense is to just suppress so that. filled with resentment and anger and frustration towards other people in the world, even ourselves, perhaps. Yeah. That it's so toxic that we need to drown it out with alcohol. So alcohol is the solution, not the, what's the saying? What's that AA? Called? Yeah. Drugs and alcohol. Uh, are the solution, not the problem, or uh, right. drugs are not the problem. They're the solution, which is not so meant good. to be taken literally or, well, no, I think it is. So it's, but it's the solution that, that the person has, has latched onto, yes. although it's not their, it's not the right, it's not the long-term solution. Correct. For their... Correct. Okay. Gotcha. But it's also because it's used in a way to sort of start shattering or at least shifting people's perspective on what it is they're doing. Right. It's right. like you're drinking because you have problems. Yes. And you think the drinking is it's the good. answer. Right. But it's it's not. Yeah. Or you might even think drinking is the problem. I was at a meeting the other day and, and someone was talking wisely about you know, we often people go to AA to stop drinking. Mm -hmm. But really, that's not why people stay. People stay because it provides a beautiful solution and way of being that makes our lives meaningful and, and fulfilling right. and that kind of stuff. Right. So that's a, perhaps an example, right? Um, I want to see where we're going with this, but okay. one question that's popping yeah. up. So we have a pretty good understanding of what resentment is. Right. Um, I guess maybe the next question I'd ask you is why is it so bad? The next, I have two questions for, in my mind and let me know how you want to tackle these. One, why is resentment? Why is it so bad to be resentful? Yeah. Uh, what are sort of the practical implications on our day to day life when we're walking around full of resentment? Yeah. Um, the second question is: Is it ever justified to feel resentment? I mean, we can be wronged by a lot of people. Um, people can do really bad things to other to others. What's wrong with that? A grieved party having you know a lot of resentment um, isn't that just sort of a natural emotion to have and they've been victimized and they should be upset. <clears throat> yes. Sorry. Yeah. yeah it's a good they question. should have resentment towards yeah. those who may not, maybe have not have addressed that issue, right. addressed the wrongs they've done, uh, acknowledged it even, you know, so first what, what's so wrong with resentment? Why, why walking around with resentment? Why is that such a problem for us? Yeah, I think, well, one, it's a negative emotion. Okay. Okay. And it, there's no outcome there. There's no go for it kind of idea. If you want to walk around holding on to resentment, see what that does for you. Is that helping you? Is that, is mm -hmm. that what is that doing for you? And for most people, most of the time it's quite destructive, right? Mm -hmm. It's very destructive. So if I'm walking around resentful at capitalism, which I certainly was, mm -hmm. then 
I would perceive any success or anybody who would display the benefits of capitalism, wealth or something like that, a nice car, then I might want to do damage to that car or to that person, or maybe not, right? Or I might, I was so filled with rage that I had fantasies of sort of like suicidal fantasies of mm. like attacking what I thought the problem was, right. one of the problems, which was capitalism. Right. Uh, if I'm walking around resentful at my parents for something, mm -hmm. that again is not going to do anything. It's not going to lead to any effective outcome or solution. Not only that, it's going to poison my own psyche and soul and spirit because I'm going to be walking around in tension and negative emotion, ruminating on things. And then any solution that comes from that place or even action is, I think it's fair to say, bad right is not good so the resentful person is just ready to explode easily triggered yes and yes. the explosion is never is almost never or maybe never 100 percent of the time a productive thing for that person in terms of helping them move forward yes i would say probably never, never. and this is where we can distinguish it from anger so yeah. the effective expression of anger can be effective. Like healthy, like yeah, mentally healthy. Yeah, 100%. That person is abusing me or this thing is not right. I need to get angry to say something and stand up for myself. And so anger is okay. Resentment is not because anger is a sort of like a one-shot momentary I think, reaction kind yes, of thing yes. where you're putting your foot in the ground. You're saying, here's my line. It's been crossed too many times. Yes. But wouldn't being resentful make you more likely to have these angry explosions? Yes, perhaps it could, which is why letting it go or learning how to You're process less... it is so helpful. Right. You don't want right. to be angry all the time. So is anger more of a, when anger, just to take a, a, a tiny tangent, yeah. maybe this helps us. So anger coming from resentment is no good or sorry, is not mentally healthy, right? So angry explosions coming from resentment. Right. But when would anger be an okay, emo like more yeah, of a, like an acceptable, sure, sure. productive yeah. emotion for us? When, when I think when it's protective, right? So okay. like someone's heart physically harming yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Or, or you know, someone you love. Yeah. And also, you know, you, you could debate the effectiveness of activism, but sometimes it's important that people get angry to yeah. be, be, you know, to advocate for, for people that are being abused or yep. that are being mistreated. Okay. I do think history continues to show us that in the grand scheme of things, anger is not the best form of activism, right? Right. If we look at people like Martin Luther King Jr. or Nelson Mandela or whoever, uh, their form of activism was not rooted in anger. Right. It was rooted in common humanity. Mm -hmm. So so in that sense. But yeah, I think anger is good. Also, you, it's important to express anger if you are angry at somebody. Right. Because then you don't harbor resentment. It's got to go somewhere. Yeah. Like the feeling, the, that energy has to go somewhere. Yes. Right. Oh, that's interesting. So if you bury your anger with someone or something that's causing harm to you or something else that you care yeah. about, yeah. that's more likely to get you into a place of resentment. Yes. Resentment could be the product of buried, yes. suppressed, yes. emotionally suppressed anger. Yes. And... Okay. There's two interesting things that come up for people when doing this work. One is you realize so much of your anger or resentment is because you didn't take responsibility for addressing something you didn't like. In, in sort of like pretty early on in the... In a situation. In a, so just like right. you said, if I'm angry with my wife and I don't say that and tell her that, that turns it's into the, resentment. And then I just turn into an ass, right? Right. And, you become passive right. aggressive. And I blame so her for my problems. So right. in my own head, I'm stewing. She's this, she's that. It's her fault, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I never take responsibility for it. And then I act like a jerk. Right. And whatever. Because you're full of resentment. Yeah. You got some resentment there. The other piece. Yeah. And the other, it, it always comes back to personal responsibility, right? So mm -hmm. if it's, I'm resentful at capitalism, mm -hmm. then I'm in some sense blaming capitalism for my own inadequacies. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not the fact that I'm a drug addict and I don't want to work hard and I blame right. everyone for my problems <laughs> right. and I spend all my money on drugs. That's not why my life sucks. My life sucks because, because capitalism of... is greedy 
and right. doesn't allow me the opportunities to be paid well for doing nothing. Okay, so that point that point you just made yeah. um, is a good segue into that second question of when might resentment be justified? Right. So if I grew up in a refugee camp, so you're right. Those who are, in some sense, you're saying those who live in these free societies, flaws and all, shouldn't be living in resentment at sort of the, the structures that surround us because they have the freedom to navigate them, to maybe escape them to some extent, to not have them dominate their lives. Well, but what about those who don't have the kind of freedom that are that are that are born in a country, say like North Korea? Um, that's that, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Where your choices are very limited, and yes. you don't have the freedom to escape. <laughs> what, 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 yeah. yeah, I think the answer is always inadequate. So the answer to that is always inadequate in a sense of it's important. We talked, we've talked about this in other episodes. We want to align ourselves with ideals. So the ideals are always personal responsibility, forgiveness, acceptance, letting go in some sense, just full surrender to actually what's actually happening. Right. As, as even, sorry, sorry, to yeah. interrupt, but even when everything around you is horrible. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And again, think of like Nelson Mandela, 25 years in prison or whatever. Right. Uh, and again, I, I'm not saying I could ever do that. Right. And it would be ignorant of me to assume I could. You're just saying it's the right approach. Yes. Right. And I think born through history, cross-culturally, in terms of the wisdom traditions, et cetera, mm -hmm. that seems to be the way that's been passed down for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Then, because if you accept that in some sense, then whatever action you do take just comes from a place of sort of wisdom and insight and balance, then you're more effective in whatever it is you choose to do. Which might entail challenging the very structures around yes, you and yes. the powers that are negatively affecting yeah, your life. Yeah, okay. Yeah. As opposed to lashing out right. in anger or resentment, and that may probably just makes things worse. Certainly makes things worse. Yeah, you, yeah, right. yeah. Right? It may, may bring some momentary relief or something like that. But ultimately, it's not a good long-term strategy. And again, that's a very unique situation, right? It's so hard for people to... It's fine to think about that. But to actually imagine what that's like for people is just so nearly impossible if you're not in it. Um, but I, again, it goes back to the ideal, right? That we want to know what the ideal is so right. that we can try to live in alignment with it. Right. And maybe this is also a bit of sidetrack, but part of what's happening in the world right now is since World War II, per se, something like that, the world order has been sort of principled around this universal ethic, mm -hmm. universal rights, mm -hmm. right? Morals, all that kind of stuff. And that's being challenged like crazy all over the place right yeah. now, right? There is no universal truth. There is no universal way of being, moral relativism, all these kind of things. And, you know, I think that's destructive and unhelpful and creating chaos and Mm. We have to have some sort of, I think reality speaks best, right? So reality has shown us that for all its flaws, sort of the, the liberal world order since World War II has actually created the biggest boon in uh, money, security, mm -hmm. uh, less hunger and starvation. Like life, uh, history is just a bloodbath. Right. And so anyway, I know we're getting sidetracked away from resentment, but uh, personally speaking, I was so filled with rage towards the liberal world order, mm -hmm. particularly around 9-11 and those kind of things. And I was just ignorant, obviously, and sort of right. in, incapable of taking responsibility for my own life. Right. It's so easy to just blame the world instead of looking at your own inadequacies. Right. Okay, so... It's a bit of a tangent. But. Um, okay, so I, I'd like to ask you... Let me just do a, a quick recap. So yeah. resentment is, so what is resentment? Resentment is a longstanding negative emotion towards someone that you continuously play out. Um, emotion and thought pattern. And thought, right. Yeah. Emotions and thoughts are different. Okay. So it's more not just angry in a moment. It's, it's upset and angry and whatever other emotions and thoughts we characterize it as, but over, over a long period of time. Yes. That you're walking around with it for weeks, months, years. Resentment is bad. Why is so? That's what is resentment. Um, resentment is why is resentment bad? Because it makes us 
it's an it's a very negative emotion. Yep. So not all emotions that are negative are bad. Correct. Fear can be very productive, but this one is particularly toxic because it lingers. And you're saying that it makes us likely to have these outbursts, to make us passive aggressive, to destroy relationships, to just be easily triggered and always on edge. Yes. And um, the third question we've talked about so far is, is it ever justified to be mm. resentful? Right. Um, and you're saying, <clears throat> yes, it's, it's, it's justified to be upset with people who've wronged you, but it's not right to hold on to that for too long yes and to take responsibility for what you can control and to carve out that sort of emotional space where you can let go of anger and frustration with others and really sort of own your own emotions your own thoughts your own daily habits and practices to the best of your ability and to forgive and let go in a healthy way yes and just to reiterate that was a yeah. good summary mm. these aren't my ideas right and we're just yeah, we're just trying to regurgitate the ideas that, again, have been around cross traditionally or whatever globally for thousands of years. And I think social media is a bit to blame for this, but we just were in this sort of great forgetting of, right. which is perhaps why sort of there's a rise of stoicism. Like we've just forgotten these fundamental truths and mm -hmm. realities that have been passed down to us. And it's important now to, I don't know, what's well, always important, but. Here we are this talking about it. Yeah. Um, so the next question I want to ask you is when resentful, what do you, what should we do? Yeah. Good. Okay. So, well, in that case, let's read this. I'm going to get you to read it because you have okay. a, a better voice here. So read this uh, out loud. Yeah. Okay. Um, putting out of our minds the wrongs others had done, we, re we resolutely looked for our own mistakes. Where had we been selfish, dishonest, self-seeking, and frightened? Though a situation had not been entirely our fault, we tried to disregard the other person involved entirely. Where were we to blame? The inventory was ours, not the other person's. When we saw our faults, we listed them. Yeah, yeah. We placed them before us in black and white. We admitted our wrongs honestly, and we're willing to set these matters straight. Okay. So this, this reflects a little bit on some of the things you said, right? So though a situation had not been entirely our fault, we tried to disregard the other person involved entirely. Right. right. Where I, were we to blame? This is about we us. We just take on, right. We take, we take full responsibility. Correct. Correct. And this goes back to the opposite of resentment, as Douglas Murray says often, is gratitude, but it's not gratitude. It's responsibility. It's res per taking, right. Okay. So what's a, what's an, an example of that? Something, yeah. well, someone, let's, some, let's someone hits me, right someone rear ends me. No, how about, how, so okay. let's read. Okay. So, so in okay. the practice, okay, it would be, I'm resentful at. Yeah. List all people, places, things, institutions, ideas, or principles with whom you are angry, resent, feel hurt, or threatened by. It is crucial that you include every single resentment you can drum up, regardless of how petty you think it might be. Hmm. So as I mentioned, I think I mentioned this on the video, I can't remember. My sponsor was like, what is this garbage kind of idea when I gave him my list at first. Why so, did he say that? It was too long? No, it was too short. Oh, like you only had 30 things you're resentful yeah. towards? You should have more? 30 yeah, is a yeah. lot. Well, again, I think just for the audience, because most people here aren't in re addiction recovery, um, for us folk, okay, our resentments are fucking deeper because that's one of the that's one of the symptoms of addiction or alcoholism is resentment. It's sort of one of the it's like an illness. It's part of the illness. We never take responsibility. We blame everyone else for our problems. So you're just like, so when, when so in addiction, the, the, the addict is just acquiring things to resent yes, constantly. Yes, just yes, this, yes, there's yes, this, yes, there's yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. So it's not just like one large. No, everything. It's everything. Everything you, becomes a resentment. Time, everything, yeah. I, I resent everything. Yeah. And, and just to make this applicable to the normal folk, again, Br Brene Brown for whatever, you know, if you like her or not, doesn't really matter. She talks a lot about blame. Mm. You could maybe, maybe blames a little analogous to resentment, but yeah. And she talks a lot about how, you know, when you blame other people for things, it's just so ineffective. It's corrosive to relationships. It's corrosive to everything. And, and so anyhow, so for the people that aren't in addiction recovery, if you actually, well, if you are curious about freeing yourself from things that you're holding on to, uh, or you want some sort of more, 
I don't know, psychologically effective skills for navigating difficult things. Mm -hmm. This type of practice is tremendously effective. And I've used it with a lot of clients who are not addicts at all, and they find it tremendously helpful. Okay. So walk me through that yeah. practice a bit. What so is, let's what do, do that. So I just read this little thing here. Okay. So let's say, let's say, uh, you know, one of my old ones was okay. I'm resentful at capitalism because okay. it's unfair, greedy, and uh, self-serving. Okay. Okay. It actually would be more helpful to say I'm resentful at capitalism. Okay. Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah. So what happened? Be specific as to why you were resentful. Because so, it makes people mean. Well, here's this like I went to university, got a degree and can't get a job. Yeah. And can't get a good paying job that I think I deserve. Okay. So you blame the economic system. Yes. For the fact that I, you're struggling to find yeah. work. Okay. And why that, or, or I guess like where you can separate an analysis of reality yeah. from resentment is I'm, I'm, yes, I know because someone, sorry, yeah, go for it. Go ahead. No, no, no. No, because someone might say, okay, I got a degree um, and I got the, let's say just, I got a degree, I got this job, but my, but everything is about in my, in the, in my organization where I work or the company, everything's about profit. They don't, they don't give a shit about my mental health. They don't care about the injury I just sustained. They don't care about giving me time to, to be a dad or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, this is just because they all care about profit. They only care about productivity and efficiency. They don't care about me as an individual. And this is just a, you know, this is just a function of our capitalist economic culture that prioritizes material wealth over any other form of well-being. Yeah. That would be a legit critique. It could be. Yeah, for sure. So how, so how do you separate out like meaningful critical engagement with the problems that yes. exist in yes. our society yeah. versus... Yeah, it's a great question. So it's just like sitting in that stew. Of yeah, resentment. yeah, yeah. Okay, so one, it goes back a little bit to this thing we were talking about before for people in tremendously difficult circumstances. It's, well, this is reality. Right. I think there's such an aversion to just accepting reality for how it is. Yeah. This is the system that we live in. And there's always that sort of, sometimes it's used, I think, what's the word sort of like uh, without integrity where it's like, well, go fucking live in China. Yeah. Seriously, go live in Russia, go right. live in Venezuela. If you don't like this, go somewhere else. Right. Like there, I do think that that actually matters. Right. We need to accept that reality. Right. Right. And it's not a cheesy, like screw off comment. It actually really does matter. But then, yeah. Then, what ahead. do you say to the Russian, Chinese, yeah. Venezuelan individual who lives in those systems that are not as sort of freedom providing yeah. as ours? Uh, Can they be resentful and sure, hundred percent? Which is to why manage it is even more important that they're not. Well, we're talking about me in Western society okay. resentful to capitalism, right? Because okay, right, right, right. right. and uh, you just look at the numbers; like nobody is flocking to China. Okay. Right. Nobody's flocking to Venezuela or Russia. Right. They're all coming here. Right. Okay. Because our societies are better. So, and I okay. don't, like, I, I think we actually need to acknowledge that we're so scared to acknowledge that because we think we're being, uh, I don't know, rude or like judgmental. To, it's right. nothing about judging other people on their moral compass. So, but, so yeah. Mike, if I, so if I, so if I came to you and we did this exercise, let's say you're yeah. the therapist, I'm the, I'm the client yeah. or the patient. Um, we did the resentful exercise and I'm like, I fucking hate capitalism. It's screwing me over. It's screwing over everyone. It's destroying the world. Yeah. Fuck this. Um, and you're like, okay, let's, what's the cause? Well, I think it makes people greedy and selfish yeah. and mean and yeah. no one cares about emotional well being. Yeah, let's do it. And then you would, how would I, how would you, so you would say, well, I would, I would, what would you then do with that? Yeah. You would say, no, you're wrong about capitalism. It's actually better than you think. And well, you yeah, yeah. Accept it. So, or? so no, it's a good question. So I think, if I'm your therapist, yeah, my approach to this is far different than if you are an alcoholic that I'm sponsoring in AA. Okay, so if so, mm, interesting. Okay, but but this the process, and I would just be I'm just I don't beat around the bush, right? Like if it's, yeah, of course. or or not, I nor should you. yeah, or like 
I, just the therapeutic approach. And it depends on the person, obviously, right. right? And their personality and what they're struggling with and how right. open they are to certain things and where. So there's nuance, obviously, but let's go through it. Okay. So, okay. so you're resentful at capitalism because of all these things. Mm hmm. Okay. So when you think about this resentment, so the, the first question always is like, is this helping you? Right? The resentment how, is yeah. Helping, how right? is this helping you? No, no it, it gives it's you a little dose of moral. Still, yeah. It's like yeah. you feel morally superior for a moment and, and then, then you're angry, back then to then your misery. Superior, right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So does, does this resentment affect your self-esteem? Um, Okay, so I'm just playing. I'm I'm yeah. I'm role playing yeah, here. Yeah. So let's say self esteem. Whoops. Sometimes I feel like, wow, I'm this awesome moral person. Yeah. But then, like, look how enlightened I am. I can right. see through the bullshit. Right. Sorry for swearing. Let's not swear so much. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um. But then, I also remind myself, as I said in the cause, I don't have a I don't have a job. I'm you know oppressed. I have, no one respects me. Yeah. So no, I guess it's not good for my self esteem. I feel like I'm just a very good. not a. So no, I guess in I have momentary thing, you know. Yeah. Okay. So it hurts or threatens your. I should say this is not actually describing how I feel. I'm just yeah, yeah. I, I was just sort of playing out what I yeah. how I might think about yeah. this. Okay. Okay. Pride. So I similar to the self self esteem, it might make me very proud to be critical and uh -huh. and thoughtful of our own societies and, and like i said seeing through propaganda um but then i wouldn't have a lot of pride in my own life in my own accomplishments because i haven't done anything kind of thing yeah right so it's yeah. okay yeah. and it, and if you think you're such a good person but the world is proving that to be not true yeah i'm not a good yeah yeah maybe no, something like that right emotional security um what does this one refer to i think this might be usually this is more in terms of relational so if i'm resentful at my spouse because she does blank because she doesn't rub my back enough like then it gets in the way so yeah so that might be like oh she doesn't love me or whatever so that might be an impact on my emotional security mm. so the nice thing about these categories is that when you go through enough resentments you start to see a pattern right right because so, yeah so maybe would you say if you were if you were this avatar of this oh, person, yeah. would you your emotional security be impacted? Do you think? Oh, big time! And and I can see a relate a relationship between emotional security, personal relations, and and that and I guess sex relations. Yeah. yeah. Where I'm so emotionally insecure, I'm constantly needing validation, and for people to agree with me, and yeah. and to be hugged, and to be loved, and to be affirmed, and. And yeah, I wouldn't have good personal I wouldn't be able to sustain a relationship where someone disagreed with me or right, right. I might be, you know, if I was maybe if this person was single, they would have a lot of time connecting because they were thinking out of, you know, I don't know, out of, out of moral righteousness or which is <clears throat> a mask for some insecurity. Yeah, that's OK. So that's how that would play out. Yeah. Okay. And and okay. let's say, you know, I think it's fair to say if you're resentful at this because you can't get a job, it's threatening, you know, yep. capitalism is threatening your finances and your ambitions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we're going to have to pause for today. Yeah. Because, but we'll, we'll come back and do part, part two, two okay. for sure. But you can sort of start to see a pattern emerging here. So the strategy, the core of this strategy for the, I guess this would be like the analytical patient. Right, or the analytical client, maybe not the no, addict. No, both. oh, anybody, anyone. Okay, yeah. so you, so right now you've identified for, for, I guess, for this avatar. Yeah. This what the resentment is being targeted. Yeah. What the cause yeah. of it is? Yeah. Sorry, the, not the but the, the object, the object. It. Yeah. The reason. Yeah. For that resentment. Yeah. And the negative emotional effects of being so resentful at that object. Correct. Correct. And then the next thing would be in our next session. If I come back to you, it'd yeah. be like, all right, let's develop yeah, let's some go. practical skills to to soften the resentment. Well, just here, look, there's What's lots the more. Next... There's lots more. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So we've We're just the scratched the surface here. Yeah. Okay. But I leave the session saying, okay, yeah, that's interesting. This might not be a good thing for me. I may still not like capitalism intellectually. Yes. But I know holding on to such negative emotions towards it, I think, is not is not is not a good thing for my own just like daily existence. Yeah, I think I can still not be a capitalist, right? You can still be do both. Sure, sure, yeah, right. you can okay. still not like capitalism, but at least you're regaining some agency and power yes. over your life. 
right. and your emotions. Okay. So you're you're not convincing someone, oh, you got to be a capitalist. No. It's more no, like, no. let's take some of the emotional edge off. Be intellectual about your engagement with society, but be smart about the well, emotional engagement so, with it. So here, which yeah. Is, which is maybe yeah. different. We'll just look quickly. The first one. Yeah. Okay. So what is my shortcoming? What here? is my shortcoming? Okay. Some, some people would use different language here. Shortcoming. Okay. okay. What is my character defect is the more common one. Okay. What is my character? Okay. Just, th okay. Dishonest, number one. Okay. Oop. I'm seeing some other people's there. So dishonest. Okay. Yeah. Boom. So part of this is about smashing this sort of illusion of I'm like, I'm going to blame everyone else for my problems, or I'm going to not take responsibility for my situation. It's right. sort of like, and again, for, for people in addiction recovery, that's primary objective number one, right? Is smashing the denial and the dishonesty, but. Right. So you can sort of see how this unfolds. And then, okay. yeah, I think the main piece here is just to help people put up a mirror to themselves and feel better. Right. The, the, the paradox is like the more you acknowledge your shit and darkness, yeah. the better you feel. I know. It's actually amazing. It is amazing. It's not the, we're, and we're so scared of it. So I guess maybe the last comment, yeah. I know we have to, we have to wrap yeah. up. Um, you, Initially, you said maybe this is in the weeds of AA. Like this is like step four or something. Yes. This also sounds like step one, which is like, like acknowledge there's a problem. So how how do you like? Isn't this isn't this step one? Isn't the is, no? Isn't, yeah. Could, or no? Is step one just admit you have an addiction? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. Yeah, step one is admit you have a problem with a substance. Right. Okay. Then one well, pat we go through all of this. Then right. you start to learn. Okay. Again, the substance wasn't the problem. It was the solution. The problem was me and my resentments and my emotional dysfunction right. and my inability to take responsibility for my behavior mm. Okay, and my emotions. This is another opportunity. Just to, we just learned to take responsibility for our emotions. It's amazing how empowering that is. It's incredibly empowering. And I just don't. Even when one's life isn't that good, it's still a yeah, very. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Answer. That's a drug someone should be addicted to. I agree. Would you promote addiction to responsibility? Yes. <laughs> no, because I just, like to no me, well, it's just like that's too narrow, right? So it would be more like the discipline of being responsible mm -hmm. and then discerning where I think some of the ultra hardcore people like Jocko Willink, and again, I, I'm assuming things about him that might not be true, is like the sort of radical responsibility piece doesn't mean. And again, I'm not putting words into his mouth, but you hear this from mm -hmm. people in their interpretation of his stuff. It doesn't mean you don't point out the faults of other people. So if if I'm or sorry, recon, recon, maybe not. Yeah. So the example would be okay, like yeah, yeah, yeah. if I'm in an, an abusive marriage, it's, it's yeah, you're being wrong. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and it's, you should flag it yes. exactly. Right. Don't so, just oh, it's my yeah, fault. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But so it is your responsibility to get out of that to abusive situation. It, to, right. But that doesn't mean you just keep stuffing it, not point out the problem. Right, right. I think people get caught up in that. I've seen clients get caught up in that. Right. Sometimes. So personal responsibility can be easily misunderstood. Yes. Say, oh, I'm being treated negatively because it's my fault. Correct. I'm inadequate. Correct. I'm Correct. a loser. Yeah. I'm yeah. 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 X, you know, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. C. Okay. Okay. Good. This is going to be a long video in the end. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So Thanks, we have. We have a we'll be part back. Two to... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Thank or you, part one A. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.